Good day, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Vice Squad, brought to you by the Anadromas Fly Company. Uh, this week, I know I said a couple weeks ago, I took the last week off, a bit of a crazy couple weeks around here, but um, uh, I said we were going to redo some old patterns, but uh, I've been tying a mess of these, and I think they're a fun little pattern and, and pretty easy and pretty simple. And uh, it's called the Evil Weevil. I'm going to tie this one, and it's kind of a tan color. It's a natural possum, natural brown possum. Uh, which was um, just requested by the fella who uh, ordered these. So that's what we went with. Um, also, you could tie them in darker browns, lighter browns, uh, blacks. Uh, I've seen them done in green, ice green, all sorts of colors. At any rate, I've got a uh, little caddis hook, curved caddis hook in the vise. And this is a 732, I believe. No, pardon me. 332 uh, tungsten gold bead. And we're going to use some 70 denier white UTC, which will start behind the bead. And we'll get rid of our tag. And I'm going to run that all the way down to about there. I don't want to go all the way to the bottom of the bend because it just, I think it, um, the flies don't uh, hook up as well if you go too far down. Uh, for the tail on this little guy, we're going to use some pheasant tail fibers. So I'm going to grab five or six, just a little, little bushy tail. So I've peeled those directly off the side of the stem and peeled them off so that all the tips stay more or less the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that on the top side of the hook there. And I'm just going to put a couple, three wraps and then what we can do is adjust the length of our tail, which we don't need to be too terribly long. Maybe about the the width of the hook gap. And once we've got that set, what I like to do is I'll run this right up to the bead. And we'll snip those fibers out of there. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some gold wire. This is extra small uh, ultra wire. Tie that in on your side, or the far side of the hook. And we're going to run that all the way down to where we cut the pheasant tail tied to. Next thing I'm going to grab is a piece of flash. This is like flat uh, opal mylar, or you can use it uh, off a of spool uni mylar. Uh, this is 1 16th um, uh, wide or thereabouts, just because of the size of the fly. On a size 14, I'd probably use the next size up. Just so that uh, the flashback isn't too wide and, and just make the fly kind of look out of proportion and chunky. And we'll tie that down to uh, our tail as well. I'm gonna bring our thread back up just a little bit for our dubbing so I can uh, put the noodle on there. And uh, like I said, this is um, this is called Awesome Possum by Wapsy, and it's just a natural brown color. It's nice stuff to work with. Dubs really well. So I want to make a nice fine noodle. I don't want it to be too thick and heavy, because otherwise it'll just bulk the body up and it won't look right. So then I'm just going to dub it all like back down and then work my way back up. And I want a little bit of a taper on this fly. Moving forward, I'm going to add just a little bit more to that. And what we'll do is we'll, when we end that body portion, I'll leave just about the bead size behind the bead open. And grab that piece of flash or mylar, whichever you've used. And we'll tie that in across the back to make the flash back. Like that. Then we'll take our wire and we're gonna make some even Segmented wraps moving forward as best we can. And 
And what I like to do with this is I always put the thread in front of the mylar and I'll make one extra wrap with the wire and I'll tie the wire in behind the bead. I find I get less slippage sometimes if you tie it too close back to where the body is, the wire will slip and you kind of lose your segments. At any rate, well, I'm gonna fold that flash back and I'm gonna tie back onto itself so that it's pointing the right way for me. And we'll grab a bit more of that, pardon me. We're not gonna grab more of the dubbing yet. We're gonna grab some goose biots and these are sort of a medium brown color. And I'm gonna tie those in right where the body ended here. And I want those kind of sticking straight back so that they don't follow the body. I'll tie one end on each side here. And while they're still loose and not super tied in, we'll just make sure that they're more or less the same length and both pointing the right way. And then we'll work our thread wraps back. You also, when um, when you're tying these, you just want to make sure that there's enough room for that flash to roll forward. Otherwise, if they're too close to the top of the hook, they'll it'll splay them out funny and it just won't look right. But we'll reach in there and snip the butts of those out. Nice and tight. Now we'll go back to our dubbing. flash pull it over the back you want to make sure that it's tucked in behind the bead just so it's sitting nice in there cut that out and we'll grab our whip finish tool cement to it and you'll be finished. Like I said, very easy, very simple little pattern. Gonna fish like crazy, I'm pretty sure. At any rate, thanks for watching folks. Uh, really appreciate, appreciate the support, sorry. Um, if you could, uh, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button if you like the video. Uh, hit the bell, you won't miss any of our upcoming content, which there is a ton of. Rick has always got new stuff going on there. And uh, if you wanted to head on over to fishingandoutdoors.ca for uh, the Canadian customers and .net for our American friends, uh, you can see, find all these materials, find all our uh, sponsors stuff on there. There's all sorts of stuff on there for uh, for the outdoors and, and uh, all sorts of goodies. But uh, if you go over there and check them out, check them out, uh, check out your Instagram page and Facebook as well. We'd really appreciate it. At any rate, until next week, everyone, thanks so much for watching.